Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show you an amazing creation of mine. RAM! Random Access Memory. This is a prototype of uh, yeah, a system I made to demonstrate how multiple registers of memory can use the same set of inputs and outputs. In green here are the inputs going into the memory, and on the bottom with the repeaters, uh, th that's the outputs. To the to the left, these are this is the uh, read and write controls for each register. I have two registers of memory here. Let's see what's in the first register. One zero zero one. Okay. And the second register. Zero one zero one. Okay. So the registers can can hold different values, and I can look at them separately. That's pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that the input is actually the same as the uh, value of register 2, because that's the last one. The input is still set at... It, it, yeah, it, it's still set to what I put... to what I wrote in last. Uh, let's change the register. Let's change the values, though, because it's not a useful memory system unless you can actually write to it. So... How about one one zero zero? Okay, and press this button to write to register two. So register two is now holding one one zero zero. We look at back. We look back at register one. It's still holding its old value, which is good because if it had changed when I uh, when I wrote into a different register, something would be wrong and it would be kind of a buggy, useless system. So the registers are separate from each other, they take data in separately, and can output it separately. But now, I'm going to show you something truly amazing, which m will boggle your mind! Let's look at register 2. Okay. Let's set this to zero zero one one. Okay. And now I'll choose to write to register one. What? Hans, what are you doing? You're writing to you you're looking at the second register, but trying to write to the first register? How is that possible? Ha 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 ha. Like this What? Nothing happened. Or did it? Let's take a look at register 1. Oh, I wrote to it, even though I was looking at register 2. That's because the read and write operations are completely independent of each other. There's no real reason why they would need to be the same. Because uh, the lines are separate. And okay, I think it's pretty neat. You may or may not think, it is neat, think it's as neat as I do. So that's a basic demonstration of how this RAM works, this random access memory. Uh, the random access refers to how I can uh, read from whatever bit, you know, whatever register I want, as opposed to sequential, where you can only you can only read from uh, number two after number one, and then number three comes after that, number four comes after that. With random, you could jump from register one to register five, and it takes the same amount of time. You don't have to cycle through things. So, uh, this is pretty pretty nice, pretty convenient. Uh, it'll be used in a computer, because being able to write, da write data, or to store data, and then retrieve it later is inc incredibly valuable. You can actually do computations with that ability. Oop, I fell into a hole. Okay, this is a side view of it. You can see that it's uh, it's a fairly massive construction. I'm only storing eight bits of data, and yet it's big. It's like eight blocks tall, twenty blocks long. It's pretty big, but uh, it. It's justified in being as big as it is because of all the functions it can do, uh, such as reading and writing 
Anyways, it, it's it's surprisingly hard to compress uh, to to compress stuff when you're working with redstone. Redstone is a very bulky material to work with. Uh, now, something interesting to note here is that the overall e each uh, each unit is actually very diagonal. So the first register runs from here to here. The second register runs from here to here. That's its input, and that's its output. Actually, let's talk about the color coding scheme, because you might notice how colorful this is. I like colors. I like color coding my creations. This is the... I'll make Hans Lieberson's amazing Technicolor computer. Or Technicolor dream computer. Okay, let's start with green. Green, as I said, is the input. It t It's uh, where data that you're going to store goes in. And it runs along the top and controls whether this torch is on or off. And uh, there's one over there, too. So for both registers. Uh, purple is the input control. It controls whether the input gets written to memory memory or not. This control this is the purple is the right thing or the right control. Uh, when that torch is on, writing is disabled. It's disabled by default because if a memory system is always storing the input if it's always storing the input to memory, it's not actually remembering anything because all the old data gets deleted as soon as the inputs change. It's not memory unless it can ignore the inputs sometimes and only pay attention to them when it needs to. So a signal sent to the purple area will disable that torch and allow writing to happen. Orange is where the writing is what does the writing. It takes it takes in the uh, value from it, whether the torch is on or off and uses that to set uh, the yellow over here to to store the value. Yellow is the memory component it's formed of a loop, uh, a torch loop. That that torch, its input goes onto this wire, which goes into this block, which goes into this torch, which goes into that block, uh, and that block uh, gets powered and puts power into that wire over there, and that wire controls this torch. So a two-torch loop like that is the basic memory storage unit. Yellow stores the memory. Now, it, it's kind of ironic just how small yellow is the memory storage. I mean, it's <laughs> this is a memory system and like, what, 20% of it is actually memory? But it, it's kind of like the engine of a car. Like, the engine of a car, that's the part that does all the work, <laughs> but an but an engine doesn't drive down the highway. You need the rest of the components for it to actually do something useful. So while this stores memory, everything else does useful functions to make that the memory stores be useful. Lastly, teal here and here uh, is the output control. Uh, you see that uh, the wire here is hot. It's it's on. What that's doing is it's disabling uh, this torch. The input for the torch, the wire up there, is, is off. Uh, but but even so, this and so this torch would normally be on, but teal is disabling it so that it's not uh, outputting to the to the main out outputs, because if it were, you wouldn't be able to read uh, from the other register. So the registers have to take turns in outputting to the main lines. Uh, in this one, the output is cold, or the teal, or the in the output control is is off, so it's allowing uh, the torches to yeah, it lets some of them go on and put their and put their data in the line. Okay, and glass I just use for scaffolding because it's easy to break and it doesn't block your view. Uh, and kind of looks nice, but yeah, there's my, there's a, the ramp, the memory component of my amazing Technicolor computer. So tune in next time when I probe the mysteries of the XOR gate.
Hans Lemerson signing out.